Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Premiere Pro video editing tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. If you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. Have you ever been frustrated by how long it takes to render your video files out of Premiere? Sometimes, yeah, it's just good to have a faster computer, but there's some pre-rendering techniques that you can take advantage of that will double, triple, quadruple. I've even had videos render, no kidding, 10 times faster using this technique. Uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. It has to do with something called smart rendering. We're gonna talk all about it and get this thing started right now. Okay, here we are in Adobe Premiere Pro, and don't worry, I know that there's a misspell here. I'm gonna be using that later on in the video to show you something. But in terms of rendering stuff out of Premiere Pro, when you export a video from Premiere, the first thing that happens is Premiere looks at all your video and everything here on your timeline. It breaks the video down. It applies any effects, any color grading, transitions, all that type of stuff. It sort of bakes it into the video, compresses it there into the video, and this is the rendering process. Now, after the rendering, rendering happens, we still need to encode that video data that Premiere now has. We have to encode that into the file format that we choose. The technique that I'm using is something called smart rendering. It's relatively new to Premiere, uh, but the idea is that while you're working on your video file, you can get a lot of that rendering out of the way, and then all Premiere has to do is copy all that video data over into the new file, create the file, and it's done. And it makes rendering way faster. Like I said, we're gonna be using something called smart rendering. You can check it out. I'll link this article in the description. The biggest thing about smart rendering is there are only certain formats that are support supported at this point in time for smart rendering. Uh, their codecs in an MXF wrapper, and they've got all the codecs listed here, QuickTime wrapper and those codecs, uh, and so on and so forth. I tend to use the Apple ProRes codec, and sometimes I'll use a DNX HD, or really DNX HR, in the MXF format. But for the most part, I'm going ProRes 422, and as of just a couple weeks ago, even on the PC, Premiere now has the ability to export to ProRes 422, which is amazing, so we're going to stick with that here in this tutorial. We've got a simple video here on our timeline, and I'm going to keep this as simple as I can make it. We're just going to go File, Export, and choose Media. Now here in Media, you're probably used to going with an H.264 format. It's a very small file size. It's great, great, easy to upload because of the small file size. Sadly, there's no smart rendering supported yet with H.264, so we're going to hang out down here in QuickTime. And then down here under the Video tab, right here under the Video tab, we have access to Video Codecs, and I'm going to choose Apple ProRes 422HQ. If I take a peek here, I can see that my source sequence has a size of 3840 by 2160 UHD, kind of standard 4K, uh, so we can do that or I can just hit the match source button here just to make sure see there the, the width and height are the same the frame rate 23976 everything is just kind of squared up lined up and everything else looks exactly how I want it to look I'm gonna click on the output name and I'll give this video file the name of render uh, before so this is render before we mess around with the smart rendering I'm gonna hit the export button and let's see how long this takes and if my time was correct, it was a little over a minute. I'll know exactly when I take this into the po into post-production, which isn't too bad for 20 seconds of 4K footage, Apple ProRes 422, and I'm working on my older 2014 MacBook Pro where I'm recording this tutorial right now. Now, I mentioned smart rendering earlier, and smart rendering works only if the source codec, the size, the frame rate, and the bit rate of your sequence match the all of that that you're exporting to. So you gotta export to the same codec, size, frame rate, and bit rate. We can check on that with regard to our uh, timeline here, or our sequence, by going sequence, sequence settings. You can see here that my editing mode right now is set to red cinema. That's not how I'm exporting this, and the video previews are all this iframe only MPEG. I don't want that. So I'm going to go into editing mode, and if I was working with DNX HR, I would go with the DNX HR UHD. That's the frame size that I'm working with, 3840, 2160. We're not doing that. This is one that you can do the smart preview or the smart rendering with, excuse me, and it works really nicely. I am going to move all the way up to the top and hit custom, and then I'm going to move down here to preview file format, and I'm going to choose QuickTime. QuickTime's the format. The codec that I'm going to choose is the Apple ProRes 422 ProRes 422 HQ because that's what we just exported to, so we'll be able to compare the time. Now, notice the video previews. I want to bump them up in size, so I'm going to hit the reset button here, and you can see there it is 3840 by 2160, and I'm going to leave everything else at the default. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to get this little warning of sorts from Premiere saying, hey, look, you're changing the preview file format. Uh, basically, all the preview files are going to be deleted, and you can't undo this. Okay, no problem. 
button. That's fine. Now, at this point, I want to turn your attention to this little yellow line. It may be red for you. It may be yellow, depending on uh, your computer and how you have things set up. Uh, regardless, when that line is not green, this video on your timeline is not pre-rendered or it's not rendered and ready to go. The Final Cut Pro does a lot of background rendering automatically, just as you're editing, it's working away, doing its thing, and it makes the export slash encoding process so fast because a lot of that heavy lifting has been done behind the scenes, so when it's time to export, boom, you click and it flies. Premiere doesn't do that. Sadly, as of CC 2019, there is no background render that I know of. It'd be nice if Premiere just had some automatic background rendering. However, the next best thing is to have a simple hotkey setup so you can just quickly render your timeline or begin the rendering process at any point. You get up to use the bathroom, you get up to grab a coffee, you get up to go out for lunch, whatever it is, you can just hit your render button and begin the rendering process even while you're still editing the file. And I'm going to explain more about that in just a second. But here's where it is. Sequence, render into out. I have it set to my return key. That's the enter key on the PC. I believe that is default. If that's not what you have, you can go to your keyboard shortcut menu over here into the little search window. Just type in render and then here it is sequence render into out and you can select that and drag whatever key you want down and drop it onto there. For me, enter a return is so fast and easy. I can sit here, just hit enter a return and it's going to begin rendering. The other beautiful thing about this is let's say you have a two hour movie you're working on and you only need to get up and use the bathroom for five minutes or 10 minutes or whatever let's say 28 or 33% is done. You can hit the escape key and it's gonna stop the render, but you can see part of it is rendered. We have a green line up to about right there, about almost four seconds into our uh, bit of footage here. So I can hit the enter return key again. It's gonna blast through the first 30 seconds really quickly because technically it's already rendered and then it's gonna fly through the rest of it here in no time at all. And that's a nice sight, a fully green line. And at this point, we're ready to try to export again. So select the sequence and we'll go file, export. The hotkey is command or control M. That's really the way to jump in quickly. And really all we need to do is tick on this match sequence settings up here at the top. You can see it's going to go QuickTime, ProRes 422. The size is correct. The dimensions, I should say. The frame rate is perfect. Everything looks great. And Premiere now knows automatically to use the smart renders. Well, it knows we want to come over here and just tick on use those previews that have been created. I'm going to hit the output name to give it a name. And I'm going to name this render underscore after. And I'll hit save. And all that's left to do is hit the export button. And there we have it. Way faster. That was at least three, maybe four times faster than it was uh, just a moment ago. And really, really quickly, I just want to show you. Let's say we select this text because, of course, the client says it's not San Francisco. It's just San Francisco. So we need to come in and change this. I'll grab my text tool here and I'll just select it and get rid of one of the additional S's. We really should recenter it, but we're not going to take the time to do that here in the video. I'll deselect it. You can see here what's happened. This bit of the timeline has gone back to yellow, but the rest of the timeline has remained green. This is why it can be valued, uh, valuable to do this pre-rendering even before you finish a project because bits like this little bit in here that I'm not going to touch again, that just remains rendered. So I can go through and I can just hit the enter button, pre-render that bit, and it'll continue on pre-rendering all the way down my timeline and still save me a ton of time at the end when it comes time to export. And again, if you check out the page, Adobe gives you a bunch of different codecs that are supported here for smart rendering. So you can play with anything, see what fits your workflow best, or if you shoot in a certain codec, uh, you can just pass stuff right on through Premiere uh, and save, you know, any, any transcoding processes that you can save, that always saves time and effort. Uh, so just have a little bit of fun with it, dig into it a little bit, you'll learn a whole bunch. It's really fun and it's really great to see at the end of the day after you've pre-rendered out maybe 60% of your, your timeline. All of that is just a bunch of saved time for you in terms of the rendering of the final finished product. And once more, yes, I wish it had the pre back the pre-rendering happening in the background like Final Cut Pro. Maybe someday, uh, but for now Final Cut Pro uh, has has a premier beat when it comes to that. So that's it for smart rendering. So there you have it, smart rendering in all its glory. I'm sure Adobe is going to continue uh, expanding the capabilities of this feature in Premiere as well and maybe making it baked in. I really wish they just had background pre-rendering going on all the time so I don't have to like set up some dumb behind-the-scenes application or you know, whatever, whatever it takes to set up something to automatically detect inactivity on my computer and then begin a rendering process with some automation software or whatever. 
Final Cut Pro has background rendering. It'd be nice if Premiere did something similar and saved us all a ton of our render time just kind of by default, automatically. It'd be really great to have that. Uh, so, for learning about smart rendering and Apple ProRes 422 HQ and everything else that comes along and goes along with that, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodds and Tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.